Hello everyone, the X-T5 is out and I've shot lots and lots, thousands and thousands of photographs with it. I think I have a pretty good grip of what it could do, what I love about it, some of the weaknesses. And so I wanna do a photographer's review of the Fujifilm X-T5. First, let's take a look at the body and yes, the dials on the top are back. Look, for fans of those dials for ISO and shutter speed, you know what's up. This is what you were waiting for. For everyone else, those dials at the top just make it a nice shooting experience. When I'm out shooting with the X-T5, it's a lot of fun. I can easily change my ISO with just a few clicks, rotate the aperture on the lens, and fine tune my shutter speed with just fast and intuitive speed. And it feels kind of like using an older film camera. It makes me slow down just a little bit. And once you start getting used to it, it's just really easy to use. And beyond that, taking out in the world and looking at the screen, once you're ready to take photos, the X-T5 went back to the X-T3 style screen. It goes down, it goes a little bit to the side, but it doesn't flip. So yeah, you're not gonna be able to get very many awesome selfies with this thing. But when you put your eye into the viewfinder, you get a good experience with the EVF. With boost mode activated, which is a power management mode Fuji puts into his cameras, we get a very fast EVF refresh rate. So the world looks great, it's responsive, but Fuji doesn't give us the new 5 million pixel EVS founder, the XH sensors. That's just a little bit of a bummer because we're stuck with a little bit less clear version of the world. But I will say that it's still great and I only miss it after immediately using an XH camera. Otherwise, it's a non-issue and the EVF looks fine. The XT5 itself is fast and responsive. It reacts immediately to my inputs. It feels just really good to take photos with this camera. And it gives me the confidence that I'm gonna be able to get the right shot most of the time. Speaking of the autofocus, I'm a little torn. The X-T5 inherits the same autofocus system as the X-H2, and that's a good and a bad thing. It's good because like in general use, it works great. The wide tracking autofocus now tracks subjects way better than it used to. I can focus and recompose on static objects very easily. The X-T5 features an advanced subject detect continuous autofocus that includes human eyes, faces, bird, animals, trains, and all that stuff. I don't know who was asking for train autofocus, but it's here. In the camera, I'm getting what looks to be great results. Look at the sequence with my son. The autofocus seems to be locking onto his eyes really well in almost every shot. However, when you play back the sequence on the full screen on the computer, you can see that there are far too many autofocus shots than there should be. At times, the camera can be unreliable, especially when there is a scene with a lot of stuff to compete with the subject. That's really disappointing in 2023. Beyond the autofocus, you can see that the X-T5 can shoot 15 frames per second on the electronic shutter. That is really fast, especially for a 40 megapixel sensor. And with JPEGs, you can get a lot out of the system, right? You can shoot a whole bunch, but as soon as you switch over to RAW, you're going to be filling the buffer quickly. I only got around 20 shots in a row when I was shooting birds before the buffer started to full and shots got really, really slow. This might be a letdown for those wanting to use the X-T5 in situations where they might want to get a lot of continuous RAW shots. But once you switch over to JPEG, it's a lot better. You can get a whole bunch more JPEGs on there. On the topic of the electronic shutter, it now allows us to go up to 180,000 on the shutter speed. That is just wild. This means we can go outdoors on a bright day and shoot wide open in many more situations than we have in the past and still get that creamy background blur without the need of using an ND filter. All that other stuff is nice to know about, but what about the image quality? And of course that's subjective, but in my opinion, the 40 megapixel files are very, very nice. This is the same sensor out of the X-H2. So I've been shooting with this for many months and I can say that I do like a lot of the files. I know Fuji has a list of lenses that take advantage of the 40 megapixels, but don't be afraid of that list. All of the lenses can take advantage of 40 megapixels, but some just make the 40 megapixels shine a little bit more than others. For me, the 80 millimeter macro really brings out the ability of the 40 megapixel sensor to resolve detail. Look at a couple of these files. They look absolutely wonderful. Even when you zoom in, there are micro details there that look fantastic and can compete with many other sensors on the market. What about high ISO ability? And that's where maybe things are a little bit disappointing. Anybody coming from the X-T3 and X-T4 might be disappointed because it's about the same. However, we have to balance that with more megapixels. So in my opinion, I think we could forgive them for that, even though I would have liked to see a little bit better high ISO performance, but who wouldn't? The dynamic range of the file seems very strong. In these photos that you see right here, I can stretch the file to get a lot of highlights and to get a lot of shadow detail. The files really do hold up. But really, if you're looking at the X-T5 to be a substantial difference in image quality from the X-T3 and X-T4, it's just not gonna be there. You're gonna get more megapixels 
but you're not gonna get a big, big increase in quality. The most important benefit is that we have cropping ability in the X-H2. So in this photograph of bird, we can crop in a little bit more without losing quality. And of course, if you wanna blow up your compositions, your photos bigger, then the 40 megapixels will allow you to do that. But if you're happy with what you're getting out of the X-Trans 4 sensors, like the X-E4, the X-T3, the X-T4, this isn't really as much of an upgrade as you might think. And of course, we have the Fujifilm film simulations. We have 19 simulations here, including the all new Nostalgic Neg, which has been handed down from the GFX and XH cameras. And if you're new to the Fuji system, I think you'll love using these film simulations. They are kind of like using different film stocks back in the old days, giving us unique ways to see and capture light in the world. Here you can see a single photograph with multiple film simulations applied. Some of the differences are subtle and some of them are pretty extreme. Something else to talk about is the battery life, which is really, really good. It uses the same batteries that we're used to in most of the modern Fuji cameras and it lasts a long time. Fuji claims to get over 700 shots in economy mode. I'm not exactly sure what kind of shutter count I'm getting with these batteries, but I don't really care because I can go for days on a single battery. Overall, this Fujifilm X-T5 looks great feels great and it takes very, very nice photographs. Kind of like a lot of modern cameras in 2022 and 23. I guess one of the questions is why would you choose the Fuji X-T5 over some of the other cameras in today's marketplace? Choosing the X-T5 over these other options comes down to how much you love the Fuji image quality, the film simulations, the dials on the camera, and the lens system that's honestly really fantastic with growing third-party support. In general, I do find that the Fuji system to be a little bit more affordable than the other systems. So if you're considering that, look at the overall cost. Fuji lenses are fantastic and they're a little bit less money in general than some of the other camera systems. For those of you who are already in the Fuji ecosystem, are the extra megapixels worth it? I think that's what it comes down to. If you are looking to upgrade for a new autofocus system that Fuji has been advertising as being as good as anything else, I would still wait. The tracking autofocus seems to be a little bit off right now. They might fix that in firmware. Otherwise, you're looking at whether the 40 megapixels makes a big difference for you. Also remember, for only $300 more, right, you could buy the Fuji X-H2. Fuji has made more of an effort to differentiate the X-H and X-T lines, mostly by taking stuff away from the X-T5. You won't get a great internal buffer like you will in the X-H2. There's no headphone jack or full-size HDMI input. You don't get 8K video and there's no battery grip. For me, as a mostly nature and landscape photographer, the positives outweigh the negatives. It is a beautiful looking camera that produces beautiful images and I think most people are going to really dig what they get from the Fujifilm X-T5. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, give me a like, and comment below if you have any questions. I'll be on here to answer questions along the way.